What's up everyone, welcome to the video and today I'm going to show you guys how to cut, store, and archive your film. I'm going to keep this intro short and sweet so let's just hop straight into the video. So we're going to go ahead and get our first item, a lint roller. We're going to clean up the space as much as we can. So we're just going to clean up any area that our film is going to touch, our clothes, our hands. And speaking of our hands, we're going to take our gloves, we're going to lint roll those and then put those gloves right on our hands. Next up, we're gonna take our film, and if this has been sitting around for a while, you're gonna to need to grab a anti-static cloth and clean as much dust off from that film. So there are many ways that we can cut our film. Some people use scissors, uh, some people use designated tools for film. I like to use the little paper chopper, and I'm gonna show you guys how I use that. I'm shooting with a 36 roll exposure here, and a little tip I have for you guys is that I always cut my film from the back. And this is because Every camera ends their shots around the same spot, whereas depending on how you load your 35mm cameras, they can all begin at different spots. So if you cut from the front, you might get inconsistent rolls, whereas if I find from the back, you always start and finish at the same numbers. Hopping into this, we're going to take a look at the back of the roll here and cut off any excess that we have. And then from there on out, every six frames, we are going to cut the film. Be careful here and don't scrape the film or do anything that would damage the film. Just be gentle with it and make sure you don't cut on a horizon line of a picture because sometimes those horizon lines look like those divisions in the film and you might cut a photo straight in half if that's the case. And then it'll become very hard to scan. Once we get to the front of the film, we could cut off that little extra piece. And I only have one extra frame here, whereas if I was shooting with my Leica, I might have four extra frames, but this was a point and shoot that auto loaded. Next we're going to grab our archival sleeves and these are the print file sleeves. These are the 6x6 sleeves because I find that they look the cleanest and most uniform. We're going to go ahead and load these film strips straight into there and we're going to take that same anti-static cloth, clean it up and then insert the frames one by one. We got all the cut film put in the proper sleeves. I like to put those extra frames in the first sleeve along with those first photos just to keep it organized and I don't want to use an extra sleeve just for one or two or three or four frames. We're going to go ahead and we're going to grab a label maker here and I use this just because I don't have neat handwriting. You can definitely use a permanent marker but we're going to go ahead and print the date. I find that the best way to store film is the chronological order by date. Sometimes I put the location but many times I am shooting multiple locations in one day. If you do shoot multiple dates, then you could put different sleeves or just put the multiple dates. I would opt to do the multiple dates and keep the roll of film all together nice and neat just in one sleeve. If you can finish the roll in one day, it definitely makes the process of storing and archiving film easier. But I understand that sometimes a roll of film can last many days. Sometimes the most significant day is the best date to put on that archival sleeve or just the day you develop it and scan it if you can't remember those exact dates and you didn't write them down. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our archival binder. This is good because it locks and keeps the dust out from the film negatives. We're gonna go ahead and put those archival sleeves back into the binder, lock that up and make sure that no dust is gonna get in. And then the best thing to do for these binders is the same thing with the negatives, just keep it in a chronological order. So grab that label maker, print out the year, put it on the side and the top, and we have a nice and neat organized film binder. All right, everyone, that's how I cut and store my film negatives. I find this to be a very easy way to go back and check what I have. Shooting in this chronological order really makes it easy for me to find the exact location and date of the film that I need to scan if I need to rescan. And if I'm just gonna keep this organized for future family members or anyone that I'm gonna pass this down to, it's definitely the easiest way and a nice way for people to see what I was doing on those certain days. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe down below for more film photography and photography tutorials, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.